Okay, we're gonna start our um, set of mugs and we're using our rolling pin. I'm gonna try a couple of different ones. Um, you need a big piece of clay. So you can see that I rolled this so it was long and skinny. I don't wanna have um, a piece that's more like a square. I wanna have something that I can cut out and put this piece on. Okay, so the first thing I've also saved a section of this like this was extra and so this is going to be for the bottom of it um, i'm not going to put pattern on that i do have a canvas underneath here and so that's going to make sure that it doesn't stick to the table if you use your rolling pin and you roll it without something underneath it most likely it's going to get stuck to the table and you won't be able to get it off okay so i'm going to go ahead i'm going to get rid of this texture um, it's very slight, but it is going to interfere with the design from your rolling pin. I'm going to put this where it's going up and down. And it's important when you roll this that um, you are standing. Thank you. Um, because you have to put quite a bit of pressure on this. So sitting down, you can only push so hard. Um, so you want to make sure that you stand up and you kind of lean over it. You do have to push harder than you think. So I think I'm going to do, this is a kiddos from last quarter, um, but I'm going to go ahead and press that on. Um, you don't want to move this and you just have to press and kind of inch your hands up. And you can see that design um, show up. And it's so nice because you can do this over and over and over again. Like whatever um, you wanted to make, you could transfer that texture to it. Okay, which this one looks really cool. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and turn this sideways and look at my pattern. Um, this is up to you. You could plop it down there and just cut wherever. Um, or you could look at the design and say, well, I want to cut, you know, all the way through at a certain, like, section. Okay, so, like, I could cut just right through here. So, I'm trying to use these so they don't change shapes like the cardboard. And then I would just make sure that you cut straight down. Okay, so then all this can be recycled. Um, anytime we do slabs, make sure you bring this extra stuff up so I can recycle it and let somebody else use it. And then you can see this is the design that you are left with. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and flip this over. Um, and then I'm going to score and slip. I am not sure if this... Oh, yeah, you're probably right. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and score and slip. I'm going to overlap these. And so I'm going to cut an angle off of both sides. And so that's going to be um, like a 45 right over here. This is kind of hard for some people. You could use a ruler um, or some type of straight edge if you wanted to, to like glide it or guide this along and cut this off. That would make it like more consistent to like take this piece off. Um, and so you have a 45 here. I'm gonna go ahead and flip it and do the exact same thing on this side. So I just, I mean, I'm offsetting it about a quarter of an inch and then um, sliding that down so I've cut an angle off this side and then the same thing off of the other side. So now I'm going to go ahead and score and slip right here. Okay, just right on that edge. It is nice if you have something underneath it because it lets you move it without actually touching it. So sometimes that is a nice thing. Um, and then I'm also going to score and slip on this side. So, let's see if this, 
Ooh, that is not a good slip. Okay. So, again, I should have done this before. Um, make sure you have some slip that you can work with. Um, and sometimes when you're starting something, you might even just go make some, which I did not do. Okay, so I'm going to put some slip on both of those. It's a lot harder to mix water into clay than it is just to let that stuff dissolve. So that's why we do it that way. Okay, so I'm going to put some on there. I'm going to put some on this side. And then at least clean my hands off so I don't have clay on here. And so then I'm going to go ahead and um, transfer and twist, and you can see, thank you, um, how this will um, line back up. And if you look at it from this direction, I have cut those, let's see, I've cut these 45 degree angles off to like get rid of the thickness from that overlap, okay? And on some of the mugs, if you look, um, I have all those mugs up at the top. Um, some of them I kept the design, like kept that overlap, and I just kind of embraced that it was overlapped, and I used that as part of the design for my mug. Okay, I need all eyes up at the front. Okay, For some of them, I went ahead and said, I don't want to see the, the seam, and so I put this seam underneath where the handle was, so it was hidden and you really didn't see it, okay? But I would not suggest trying to blend this because there's no way you're gonna make it look nice, okay? So you just score and slip it um, and overlap and make sure you press that so it's gonna stay, okay? So from here, we're gonna go ahead and turn this into a square and this is just kind of a having to push the walls so you can make like a corner on it and you're just going to have to tap it and kind of move those corners. Okay, so you can see that I have um, four points or four corners to it. I'm going to go ahead and mark the center of those are where I see the points being. And then we're gonna measure and cut down the sides. And so what we're gonna put on here is a dart. Um, and a dart is something that will gather something together and make something smaller. And so I'm gonna hold my ruler up at the top. And right now it's at five um, and roughly at five because the ruler doesn't actually like start right at the edge of it. Um, so it's a little bit short of that, but I'm gonna mark and I'm gonna go down um, two inches, like to three. So I'm gonna draw myself a line just straight down to there. Okay, so you can see that there's a line and then I'm gonna do that on all of them. And then this technique can be applied all different ways. Um, I have a few kids, let's see, like Emery um, has made one of these before. And so he's going to do this in a different way with a different shape of clay to create something else. So I've got those four lines. I'm going to go ahead and do um, 
half an inch to each side. And so um, you can kind of see if you put your ruler up there, you could mark, I mean, where half is and where half. Okay, and we just do that on all of them. So half an inch on each. And if it's not perfect, this is something that it, it hides pretty well, um, as long as it's not too far off. Okay, so half an inch. One more. Okay, so I've got all of these lines drawn to the side. And so now I'm going to connect from the line that I put up here to this point. So I'm making these triangles, but I'm trying to make it where they're even. So I'm cutting the same amount from each side. I will show you in just one second. This is one thing I can't do part of. I have to just do the whole thing. Okay, so I have these triangles. This is what they look like. So I tried to make it where it was the same on each side. I'm going to go ahead and cut those out. And so you're going to have these big holes in your bottom. Whoops, I missed that one. Okay, so now I have all four of those cut out. They're the same, roughly the same um, width and the same depth into that cylinder. And so now I'm gonna go ahead and piece these sections back together. So I'm gonna have to go through and score and slip inside these and press those together. But it's amazing how different this form looks once you do this. So you'll press those. Be careful, you don't want to get rid of the nice design that you have on the bottom or on the sides of it. Um, okay, so now that's gathered this part in. And you can see the top is still circular. If you wanted to square this off, you could. Um, but you can see now from the side of this, what this does, how it like tapers it in. Okay, we will um, need reinforcing coils. And so you need those in these sections right here, just where we cut. Um, and in ceramics too, we know how to do a reinforcing coil, right? Okay, so I'm just gonna let you do that, but they're gonna need to be down there in those seams um and blended so you don't see them we'll talk about the base of this later i'm going to go ahead and let people like get started and let me know if you need help <laughs> 